Hey, everybody. Welcome to Breakfast Bob from Clash Daytona. My name is Bob Babbitt, and we're brought to you by the NASCAR Foundation, Daytona International Speedway, USA Triathlon, Aquasphere, and Varlo. Our next guest, Mr. Mark Evans, who's been in the sport for over 20 years. I know it doesn't look like it, but yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Mark, uh, well, first of all, um, you're retired Navy, and you've been in the sport like since your early 20s. What got you into the sport? Well, I was a runner, and uh, I love running, but it got old. You know, you yeah. only run so many marathons and 5Ks. And exactly. 10Ks and, uh, and I was uh, talking to a friend, and he goes, hey, you ever heard of triathlon? And I thought, oh, cool. I can ride a bike. And the, the swimming part definitely was a challenge. But, yeah. uh, you know, me and a bunch of six-year-olds at the YMCA, we, uh, <laughs> we figured out how to swim. <laughs> And, uh, and my triathlon career was born. So and out there in San Diego. traveling around. Oh, in San Diego? Yeah, I was in the Navy. Oh, nice. You were down to Coronado. Coronado. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I was on Coronado is where I retired out of. I like, like that. That's where we're based yeah. in San Diego as yep, well. I knew that, yeah. Uh, so, obviously, you've gotten good at triathlon because you qualified to go to 70.3 Worlds. I like the word good because it's, uh, you know, different for everybody, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, fairly good. I, I consider myself a, a good to average uh, triathlete well and I, I like the fact that you understand that uh, um, a lot of the pros are are financially challenged oh yeah, yeah and so when you go to races you what you rent like an Airbnb and invite four pros usually I mean it's not always four but it depends on you know the race and right where I'm at but yeah so it's not that they're you know I don't do it because of the money or, or the recognition or anything like that I do it because I I grew up um in a in a in a household where we appreciated things and yes. uh opportunities were you know scarce a little bit right and i understand how it is when you're chasing a dream and you know there are things that limit you right, right. that you just can't overcome so i i just admire the the determination and the hard work and the the grit of these athletes and i feel it makes me feel like i'm part of it yeah, and uh, well, you've probably created some great friendships through oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah. You you talked to a bunch of my friends. Yes. Uh, this weekend and uh, it's it's awesome. Yeah, Vant and Rachel were yeah, with us yesterday, yep, and Jason West. Yep, and yep. so those guys, you'll come into a market like here in Daytona. Who's staying with you here? Yeah. So Jason, uh, uh, Vant, and Rachel. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Grace Alexander. You just had her. Yes, yeah, just yeah. had Grace on as well. Yep. That yeah. is very cool. Yep. And Jason was with me at World Championships too. Here in St. George. Him and his wife Jess. So we're at St. George World Championships, and you're how far into the bike ride? So about 20 miles in. Uh, luckily, I got to start at 9.30. Ooh, so it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't quite yeah, as so chilly. I was a little sweaty, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so about 20 miles into the bike ride, coming down Telegraph yep. Road there, um, closed course, and uh, yeah, uh, a woman just decided to, she couldn't wait in traffic anymore. She was intoxicated. She was uh, had marijuana in her system. Right. She honestly, I think you know. I, I know for a fact she didn't realize what where she was. She at. She didn't realize that she was driving yeah, onto yeah. a she, bike course. Right. And she went through the cones, and uh, it, it was like I knew immediately as soon as I saw her move. I was like, "There's no way I'm not going to hit that car." It was just a question of what part of that car do I want to hit, you know? So. And that's uh, going through your head, going, "How fast are we going?" You know, I, almost almost forty miles an hour. Like I oh was, I was. It was a downhill. Like I'm not. I'm no. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm no Sam Long, but I, you know, I can hit forty on a downhill. And I was, I was trucking, and I was in a big gear, pushing race watts. Right. And I had just looked down at my bike computer to see where I was at, and as soon as I brought my eyes up, I saw that she was coming. A jeep. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. And yeah. so you you hit the back end of it. Yeah, I hit her in the back. My head went through the windshield, which was probably saved my life. Yes. Uh, the impact, the glass, you know, broke instead of the metal. But uh, and I slid along the glass there, and it tore my arm up. And I mean, your arm was ripped to shreds. What, yeah. what, what was the damage to the arm? So initially, they really couldn't tell a lot of glass, and you know, they yeah. Just, uh, but they went in, cleaned it out, and the doctor, honestly, the doctor said to me, "I'm not like trying to." Yeah. He he, he said, "Thank God you were so healthy." And your tissue um, was so so good right. because I cleaned it all out and it it looks great and it was viable and able to be sewn back together and he was like they it, basically sewed your arm back together pretty much yeah wow and and it missed all the nerves all the major nerves <sighs> that is so lucky so, and the major artery I did have 
they thought I had an arterial bleed on site. Mm -hmm. They had to put a tourniquet on my right. arm because it was bleeding. Yes. Uh, quite profusely, but um, no, it was just a minor. And were vessel. you awake and alert through all this? I I was not. I remember which hit, is probably good. Yeah. The last thing I remember is hitting the windshield, and then I woke up in the ambulance. But like in the past week or so, I do now remember being being talking at the scene and, right and hearing i couldn't really see because my nose was broken i had blood all over my face yes um but i do it's coming back in pieces neck injury and then the neck break yeah so i broke uh, the top two Vertebrae. bilateral oh. ribs in, oh, okay. in my back so okay the top of my shoulders i broke four vertebrae two in my neck two in my thoracic you were very lucky you're not paralyzed yes uh one the one in my neck uh was very close to the spinal cord so, wow but all those are gonna heal, no, no surgery, uh, extremely lucky. And so in terms of grasping with the hand, yeah, everything's I mean, that's, that's, coming back. That's pretty amazing. That is amazing. I, this, I mean, this arm was completely, it felt dead. It right. felt like I had a dead arm and it was kind of tough mentally. Yes. But it, it has made leaps and bounds and I'm just very thankful. And, and what do the doctors say now prognosis wise? Yeah, uh, every doctor I see is one, they're kind of astounded. They're like, wow, you know, you're doing really well. And they think I'll have a full recovery. And and, that's and, the plan. And because you're, you're retired Navy, your insurance covered everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's one good thing. You go oh, my God. Spend a lot of places uh, or a lot of time in places that end in Stan. And uh, <laughs> they take care of you after that. They, you know, like, I, get, uh, I get discounts and, uh, you know, I get really good. I'm very thankful for yes. my Navy career and the opportunities. How many did tours did you do? I've had 17 deployments in my, my 17 career. deployments? Yeah, I started out as a submarine sailor and did Oof. several. Yeah, not fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun now to talk about. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a claustrophobia. Starter, but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah not, not the greatest career to spend a whole lifetime doing, but it was very rewarding. Uh, and then I, I got into some special operations stuff, and I was over in the Middle East. And wow. Well, let's tell about all the cool stuff you did. <laughs> well, I, I can't. Well, <laughs> oh, you have to kill me. Yeah, no. Spent yeah. a lot of time in places that don't exist doing things you'll never know about. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong. That's joke. okay. My good buddy is David Goggins, and he's done oh, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's yep. done a lot I'm of sure the same stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, haven't, I wasn't doing that stuff, but yeah, yeah. similar. Okay. Yes. And during all this, so when this happens and you're, you know, you're in the ambulance, is that, is that any contact with the, the person who hit you? Did she get out of the car and come talk to you? She or? was very distraught. I do remember that. Uh, the officer, investigating officer, told me that she was very upset and, like, you know, obviously a he very human about it. Yes. Like, oh, my God, are they going to be believe. okay? I right. can't believe I did that. Um, and now, like, I do remember, con like, having a conscious thought while I was laying on the street. Yeah. Uh, of hearing someone being frantic in the background. Yeah. And I, I'm positive that was her. And she was, you know, very distraught. And I had a, I had a conscious thought like, gee, I hope that person's okay. Like not knowing who it was at the time. Right. And, you know, she was, so it, I think that's been a little easier to, to accept that, you know, it was a human error and a human acknowledged it. She was right. doing something probably she, you know, she Shouldn't was intoxicated. Done. Right. Uh, but, she felt horrible about right. it. Right. So, you know, yes. that's good enough for me. We all make mistakes. People make <laughs> mistakes. People certainly yeah. make mistakes. Uh, but I'm imagining, that, are you back on the bike on the trainer? What are you doing? Not yet. I'm going to give my, ba my back and neck another two weeks okay. uh, for a total of six to let them just heal up really good before I start the twisting yes. motions. Right. Because um, you don't realize how much you move that part of your body until, exactly. it, until it hurts every yeah. time you move that part of your body. Yeah. Uh, so couple more weeks and I, and I plan to get back on the trainer and, um, we'll and see racing how next year uh, I'm signed up for Happy Valley so I'm a Pennsylvania boy nice. and that's a new race so I, I jumped right on that that was before the accident uh, so that's in July July 4th hopefully that gives you time yeah I'm hoping to at least be able to show up and and at least get through the course and not get thrown off the course for time but uh, yeah well, we'll see. what have, what's been the lowest point of this whole journey Oof. Oh, geez. Uh, you know, I'm a pretty positive person. I've been through a I lot of things that. in my life that, yeah. uh, you know, not good days I've right. been through. And for me, the lowest point, I think, was directly after there was a time when I was in my hospital bed. I was very aware. Uh, you know, the initial shock of everything was over. And mm -hmm. I, I just was alone. And I was trying to move my hand. Yeah. And I have two children. Uh, who are my world and I want to be able to 
you know, hold my daughter's hand when I walk her down the aisle. Right. And, you know, you know th that part of my life kind of became very self-evident at that moment. And it made me think about some of the things I potentially cannot take part on if I don't heal right. properly. Um, I feel I'm through that. Like I have a good uh, mindset going forward. You really do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's sad. It was a sad time. I uh, was, I was in a lot of pain and I just. When you're probably in the fittest condition, potentially if it fittest condition of your life. Oh yeah. For and you sure. go from that to yeah. not being able to move. Yeah. I mean, I, I was doing, I was running and doing triathlons in my twenties, but I was also doing a lot of other things that aren't conducive to good health <laughs> in my twenties. Not you performance know, enhancing. You know how sailors are guess, in their twenties. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we tend to have a bit of a reputation, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all in good fun. And, uh, yeah, I am in really good shape, and I think thank, that thank saved God your for life. That. Yeah, uh, it, it did that, and you know the fact that it all happened exactly the way it was, and the people who were there were there at the right time. And there was some medical people who. Yeah, uh, honestly, it's 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 surreal. The, the the person right behind the lady who pulled out into the lane uh, was a retired EMT. In the in the car behind in the, the woman. car behind her, and she got out and was like directing, "You do this, you do that." Wow. She got the tourniquet on my arm. Yeah, her name's Patty. She's, uh, I got to meet her in the hospital. Just to, nice. just a, and it it almost reminds me of triathlon and what I love about triathlon. Yes. Just a regular person. Yes. Just going about their day, and just in a moment's notice, they go from sitting in traffic to saving, saving two guys' lives. Oh, the second person. Yeah, there was another guy, Pat Pat Lynch. Uh, he he. I actually hit the car, came off the car, and Pat hit me, and then I think I hit the car again. Okay. So you know, Pat, thanks a lot. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and Pat's uh, okay as well. He's uh yeah he's home. He lives in San Diego. He's okay. a San Diego guy. Um, he's home. He's in a wheelchair. He's got uh, he had some shoulder issues. Yes. Um, his his injuries were all like bones, right? Mostly bone, uh, and he has some issues with his leg. He okay, had some, some nerves. Some, oh, it's okay. So he's got some PT to go through, but you know he's gonna. I think he's gonna be okay too. Okay. You know? Yeah. Great guy. Scary stuff. What would you yeah. learn about yourself through this? Um, you know, <laughs> I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> uh, so I've been through a lot in my life, and yeah. you know, you, you keep, you live that you have this like. Um, this vision of yourself of how you're, you know, you're a nice person and right. you're kind and you're tolerant and, and you try to be the best person version of yourself. Yes. And like, it took me 48 years to get there. Right. I'm not talking about I was born this way, yeah, but yeah. I've done a lot of work on myself to yes. be a, a good person. And I think you only really figure that out when you're tested in some way. Um, so I'm, pr I'm proud of myself. You should be. Uh, you know, silently. Yes. Uh, and of course, humbly, but yes. I'm proud of the way I carried myself and I'm proud of the person I am and the relationships I have and how strong they are. So I sorry, appreciate, <laughs> no, I appreciate <laughs> you're in our sport. Yeah. I appreciate your sport. I, I, love, I love the fact that while you're sport. going through all this, you're giving back to these other yeah, kids and I, and who I'll tell you, need your help and Immediately, support. I had, you know, Sarah Bishop came to see me in the hospital. Grace came to see me in the hospital. Uh, Jason and his wife, Jess, reached out to me. This community is amazing. It really is. And I, and I, I love it, and nothing will ever change that. Mark, thank nothing. you for yeah. taking time and sharing the story, man. And yeah, uh, thanks. It was awesome. Get well soon. We'll see you at the starting line. I'll be back, man. I love it. Mark <laughs> Evans has been our guest. Again, Breakfast with Bob, Clash Daytona. Hold on. We will be right back.